right, here's the pneumatic groundbreaker. It's basically a plywood base, uh, two arms connected uh, by a shoulder. All right, here we have a close-up of one of the arms. Uh, everything should be in proportion. Here you have your lower arm, here you have your upper arm, here's your uh, elbow, here's your wrist, and here's your shoulder. At each one of these joints, you will have a, um, a hinge. Now up here to actually make the arm move is you'll have this pneumatic cylinder. Uh, this is a 1 16 inch bore, 2 inch uh, throw, and it's a universal uh, mount and it's got a clevis here on it to uh, attach it to the arm. So when the cylinder is activated, this brings the arm up. Now you notice that the uh, elbow here, the arm is not completely straight. It's got a little bit of a bend here at the elbow, and that's good. It's a very, it's a little more realistic. When this happens, it also brings in this entire arm, you bend it in here at the wrist. Now because this is a double acting cylinder on both sides, when this side is activated and this side is not, this can cause a lot of undue stress on the prop if it's not built correctly. So um, I make sure that on this side of the arm or whatever side that's not activated ha can go back a little bit. And so you need to make sure when you're building this is that if this is activated and this is not, this can be all the way closed without a lot of undue stress. Um, I can't see it very well, but there's just one bolt here on each of the shoulders. Now, because at this hinge, there's just a little bit of uh, movement of rotating. And I, uh, I do this by having two washers on, in, uh, one on the inside, one on the outside here at this, at this hinge. Just when this is activated, there's just a little bit of rotate and this uh, helps keep down that, that part of the stress. So again, there's a, um, Use bolts on this, don't use drywall screws, especially on, um, on either of the pneumatic touches. Uh, I do have drywall screws here at the hinges, but because they're not a, not a lot of heavy duty when, um, right here. But there is. All right, so once you have this all set up, what you can do is you put a jacket over this and you can have a nice mask. And what we did was um, actually, once we put the jacket on, we actually drilled holes onto the jacket, on, onto this wood to actually make sure that, to stabilize the, uh, the jacket. Um, here you can do the, uh, any kind of mask you want. Um, I tried a foam head, the foam head didn't last very long because of all the movement of this prop. So it's best to probably use a gallon jug as a, uh, uh, to fill out the mask. Now because there is so much movement in this and a lot of jerky movement, what happens is we have a little bit of a slope in our front yard, so I had to add this to kind of stabilize it. And also an issue with that is because there's so much movement, it was actually slowly sliding down the yard. So we actually had to stake it down and put something in front of it to prevent it from uh, moving. And what you can do, we didn't put hands down here, but you can. And, but then we also also put a, a grave, you know, basically uh, a dirt covered sheet just to make it look like he really was coming out great. And that also covered up a lot of this whole thing. Um, now what will happen back here is you'll put um, some chicken wire. And what happens is because he's leaning forward, you want the jacket to go back. So what happens is you want the jacket to come back down here. And I just drilled holes in, into this so the jacket would uh, go back. And then that also caused the front of the jacket to come down here as well. Okay, here we have the prop plugged in, and I'll show you some of the movement. Here we have one arm extended, back down. Here we have the other arm. And here we have both arms. 